There's something about Hideo Kojima and everything he does that just brings out absolute insanity in all of his fans, resulting in elaborate conspiracy theories and unimaginably bizarre speculation about stuff you wouldn't even think of if any other game developer was involved. But a lot of that is down to the pure and simple fact that it's Hideo Kojima himself that it stems from. He's been playing complicated schemes and games with his fans for as long as anyone can remember, from the back of the CD cover of the original Metal Gear Solid, to the bait and switch about who the protagonist would be in Sons of Liberty, to the false reveal of the Phantom Pain developed by an unknown indie team known as Moby Dick Studios, to the shadow drop of an unbelievable playable demo known as PT, which turned out to be a tease for the upcoming, and eventually cancelled, Silent Hills. For Hideo Kojima, all the speculation and theorizing that surrounds his games is part of the game. For him, the experience goes beyond just what's on the disc. Take Death Stranding, for example. Though the game was revealed two years ago now, we still don't really know what it's exactly about. For any other game, two years and four meaty trailers would have been enough to give us a solid idea of what to expect from the final product. But where Death Stranding is concerned, we effectively know about as much as we did when we first found out about the game's existence. It's this shroud of uncertainty and feeling of being enveloped in absolute confusion that's given rise to so much speculation about the game, and there's no doubt that all of this has very much been part of the whole experience. A prelude of insane theorizing, constantly building up and finally crescendoing, leading to the grand finale, that being the game itself. Some of these theories, of course, have been more ambitious than others. One particular theory that's been kicking around a lot is the fact that Death Stranding is secretly Silent Hills, that the two games are one and the same. And Kojima fans have done an admirable job of taking this absolutely batshit insane notion and turning it into something that's actually somewhat believable. Personally, I don't believe that this is true, the pure and simple fact that Konami went through an absolute shitstorm of a PR nightmare that must have involved thousands of legal complications is enough to point at the simple fact that no, of course Death Stranding isn't Silent Hills. Silent Hills was cancelled. The IP is owned wholly by Konami. Kojima left Konami, and under very acrimonious circumstances. It's fair to say he doesn't send any Christmas cards to the company's top brass anymore. And no, it's not all a ruse because why the hell would Konami go through what is probably the worst PR storm in the history of their existence just to set up some elaborate ruse about a game that they had already announced? But wait, I do believe that there's a lot of weight in the theories that say that Death Stranding and Silent Hills are one and the same, because while I just can't see any logical explanation for how that could actually be true, I do think that Kojima is making the game he always wanted to make, just under a different name. So while Death Stranding isn't Silent Hills from a purely technical standpoint, I do still believe that Death Stranding is Silent Hills, in spirit. Now we're not the first ones to say this, this has been one of the most talked about fan theories surrounding Death Stranding for a few months now, and we certainly won't be the last. We've done three videos in the past talking about the connections between these two games. You can watch them through the links in the description below. So it's no secret that we here at Gaming Bolt do put some stock in the idea that the similarities the two games share are more than just coincidences. Because there are just so many similarities, so many thematic connections, so many narrative strands that seem to be connecting them both, so much visual imagery that stands out in both games, so much behind the scenes stuff that connects both projects. No, Kojima can't be working on Silent Hills anymore, for obvious reasons, but the game is living on regardless in his new project. The ideas that Kojima had for Silent Hills have found a new home in Death Stranding. The most basic surface level similarities, such as the involvement of people like Guillermo del Toro and Norman Reedus in both projects is something that's so obvious we need not even speak about it, so let's move beyond that. Let's look instead at the intermingling themes of guilt and family which characterized PT as they've done in so many Silent Hill games, and seem to be a core part of Death Stranding as well. If you've been lucky enough to play PT, you know about the news broadcasts that keep playing on the radio. They speak about two reports of fathers having murdered their families, one of whom murdered not only his pregnant wife, but also his 10-year-old son and 6-year-old daughter. The day of the crime, the father went to the trunk of his car, retrieved the rifle, and shot his wife as she was cleaning up the kitchen after lunch. When his 10-year-old son came to investigate the commotion, the father shot him too. His 6-year-old daughter had the good sense to hide in the bathroom, but reports suggest he lured her out by telling her it was just a game. The girl was found shot once in the chest from point-blank range. The mother, who he shot in the stomach, was pregnant at the time. In part two of this series, we already spoke of how the reports about the second murder seem to share connections with the ideas behind Death Stranding. In case you haven't seen the video, the gist is this. The radio broadcast mentions that after the man kills his wife, he hangs himself in the garage with a garden hose. But if you listen carefully, you realize that that has actually been overlaid over another voice, which is not as loud and pretty distorted, 
and it seems to say the man hung himself with an umbilical cord. After killing his family, the father hung himself with a garden hose they had in the garage. So right there is one very obvious connection because we've seen umbilical cords literally everywhere in Death Stranding. The babies have them, the dead crabs on the beach have them, Mads Mikkelsen has them, hell, even the planes flying overhead at the beginning of the second trailer have them. However, the news broadcasts and PT share another connection with Death Stranding. The reports about the first murder state that the man killed his entire family, and included in this family was his pregnant wife. Why is that relevant? Well, it became relevant pretty recently. In the 8 minute long trailer that Sony showed off at this year's E3, there was a lot of stuff to dig into. The part that we're concerned with right now though is the photograph that Norman Reedus' character Sam keeps looking at. In the photograph you can clearly see three people, Sam himself, Lindsay Wagner's character, and a woman on the left who seems to be pregnant. Side note, in part 3 of the series we mistakenly mentioned that Lindsay Wagner's character is Sam's wife, and also failed to mention that the woman on the left is pregnant. Thanks to our viewers who pointed this out in the comments. As Sam looks at that photo, you can clearly see a pained expression on his face, like he's not only looking at something he misses, but also like he's remembering a painful time in his life that he might harbor some guilt over. At the same time, while Sam is looking at the photograph, Leah Seydoux's character tells him the timefall, the mysterious rain we've been seeing so much of, fast forwards whatever it touches, but that it, quote, can't wash everything away, and, quote, past just won't let go, hinting at stuff in Sam's past that he wants to forget. Was the pregnant woman in the photograph perhaps his wife? Did he kill her? Did she die some other way? The connections with the radio broadcasts on the radio and PT are painfully obvious. There's also a tweet by Hideo Kojima himself that seems to hint at Sam's familial connections in the game. But there's more stuff related to that picture in the trailer that's pretty interesting. Before we get to it, let's get back to PT once again for just a second. In the demo, the radio broadcasting the news is kept on a table. Right next to the radio is a picture of what we presume are a husband and wife standing next to each other. At a certain point in the demo though, if you look at the photo, the wife's eye explodes in a spray of some sort of liquid, leaving behind nothing but a hole in the photograph. Now, looking at a particular bit in the E3 2018 trailer for Death Stranding, you have to slow it down quite a bit to be able to actually notice it, but something very similar happens to the woman's eye in the photo, who we're assuming is Sam's wife, as we've mentioned already. Credit to commenter anime girl Amy for pointing this out in the comments section of our part 3 video, by the way. Let's move beyond this stuff and take a look at some of the behind the scenes workings, because once again, there are a lot of things that are common in Death Stranding and Silent Hills. For starters, back in 2014, Kojima was doing something that game developers usually do when their games are in the pre-production stages. They travel around the world to scout locations that their games might be set in, or might take visual inspiration from. Keep in mind that this was during 2014, and the game that Kojima was working on at the time was Silent Hills, not Death Stranding. One of the places that Kojima scouted was Normandy in France. Looking at the images that Kojima shared, the beach might remind you of something. I'd say it looks like a certain beach we saw in the very first trailer of Death Stranding. Sure, it's fair to say that we can essentially take photos of any beach and liken them to what we saw in Death Stranding, but this is Kojima that we're talking about. First rule of analyzing anything and everything that Kojima does, there's no such thing as small coincidences. There's also the fact that Omaha Beach in Normandy, which is where those pictures are, is one of the locations that is most commonly associated with the Second World War, being the landing site of D-Day. Why bring up World War II, you say? Well, because the second trailer of Death Stranding, the one with Mads Mikkelsen and Guillermo del Toro, was set in World War II, or at least some crazy alternate version of it with inverted rainbows in the sky and weird dead squid monsters on tanks. Another correction, by the way, in part one of this series, we made the mistake of saying that the soldiers in the trailer are Germans, but it's since been pointed out that those were actually American soldiers. So it doesn't end there, because you know what looks even more like the beach in the first ever Death Stranding trailer? The black beaches of Iceland, and of course, other than Normandy, Kojima also went location scouting in Iceland, also in 2014. But wait, there's still more, because while in Iceland, Kojima took photos of other locations as well. He also tweeted a picture of a rolling patch of land covered in moss. Once again, does this imagery remind you of anything? The E3 2018 trailer of Death Stranding was dominated by scenery of land that was covered in moss. What's interesting is that Kojima went location scouting to both these locations back in 2014 before he even left Konami, right around the time Silent Hills was first announced. So it's obvious that he was doing all this behind the scenes stuff for Silent Hills, and these ideas ended up finding a way into his newest game. There's a lot of other stuff that points to the same conclusion, because a lot of fans have also found assets in PC that look very similar to things we've seen in Death Stranding trailers so far. For instance, there's an image in the PT hallways of a weird squid monster that looks a lot like what we saw in the third Death Stranding trailer. There are those paintings in PT, which look almost exactly like some of the scenery we saw in another part of Death Stranding's trailer. 
Then there were these unused textures from PT that look exactly like the baby's butt we saw right at the beginning of Death Stranding's 2018 trailer. You can watch them through the links in the description below. Or how about the fact that when Sam is climbing the hills in the new trailer, the lyrics from the song in the background are literally saying silent. Now, we know you might be looking at a lot of this and scratching your heads, wondering why we're off wandering in crazy land, looking at tiny little details and connecting them with stuff that might seem circumstantial at best. And you're right. Viewed in isolation, these things do look like nothing more than coincidences, or maybe even nothing at all. But again, at the risk of repeating myself, this is Kojima we're talking about. There's no such thing as crazy or over the top when you're analyzing his work. Every time I play PT, or look at its gameplay, since I'm way too weak-hearted to actually play that game by myself. I can't help but lament at the fact that we won't ever get to play that game in its final form. It's an absolute travesty that Silent Hills was cancelled, because the things a mind as brilliant as Kojima's could have done with the horror genre is something I can't even fathom. So yeah, like millions of others, I'm devastated that we'll never get to play Silent Hills. But at the same time, I also take comfort in the fact that Kojima is taking so many of his ideas for that project, and putting them to use in Death Stranding. Death Stranding is not Silent Hills. To say so would be flying in the face of so many logical and obvious arguments that suggest the exact opposite. But every day, I become more and more convinced that Silent Hills, the game that will never be, is living on in spirit in Kojima's newest project. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.